Okay, there we go. All right. Jeremy, thanks for uh, coming on again. Ooh, um, yeah, I here think, we are. I think last time we chatted was about nine months ago. I think crazy. when you first your first issue of Green Lantern. Crazy. It's so crazy. It's been, nine. I mean, I guess you're right, because it's issue nine. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, right? Yeah. It's weird to think that. It's really weird to think that. It feels like it was yesterday that I started. So has it been about a year? I don't know how many issues ahead you normally are, but it's yeah, yeah. a year. I'm, I'm in the 12th issue 12 on paper so awesome yeah i'm super excited there's some really cool stuff happening i i mean i it, it's funny it's like i think that night terrors kind of put a little like slowness in the in the run that i think everybody felt in terms of like oh man you know i i, I was getting some verbal criticism that was like this is taking too long you know and i'm like that's not fair yeah. <laughs> you, know? you have to might you have to subtract two months <laughs> you know um but he handled it great though you know because uh, it, it it felt organic and like the sense of like you know it went right into night terrors and then when it was yeah. done it went right to the next issue which was great you know for yeah, fans I, I had fun with night terrors because at least it showed i think what was fun for me was like hey the premise is that these people you know this makes people afraid i'm like oh have you heard of how you know and it was like it was fun to just kind of set up this uh, I thought I would get more flack for the first issue where it's just like, it's trying to scare Hal. And then I, I really love the turn in the second issue where it's like, yeah, you came to the wrong person on the wrong planet. You know, <laughs> it, was just, it was just this like Hal chasing the guy down for the entire issue. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. Pretty, yeah. Oh, uh, and so this was early on. Um, but I wanted to ask you about how, he got that ring because I think in just the previous issue he he's a lot of stuff going on. But like, um, did he get that ring from fighting that Manhunter? There was something happening. Yeah. With that. So so if you're caught up, spoilers. Yeah. But like, if you're caught up with issue nine, then you know that essentially what happened at the beginning of Jeff Thorne's run, uh, the power battery on Oa explodes. Yep. And that's right when the United Planets had kind of taken over jurisdiction of the Green Lanterns and the Guardians disappeared and all that stuff happened. So at that point, um, what, I, what I've said so far is that the Guardians have basically, they put this giant central power battery in the middle of Earth or, you know, somewhere in the, in, in the ground in Earth. And it's guarded by the Green. Now, People have, and I'm not spoiling anything, but the fact is the green is a mystical energy field in a way. And oh no. You know, stopped, everything stopped for a second. Sorry. I don't oh, know what that's about. But um, it, uh, so, so if, if you recall the green, there is kind of like weird connections to the green and the Green Lantern core, but the idea that the green could protect the signal or radiation from, from the central power battery. So nobody could really find out what's there. So that all happened. Uh, the power, so once uh, the power battery exploded on Oa, this thing kind of started up. And that's where you get the visions that Tom Kalamaku got. And then you also, um, things that are powered by green green energy started up. Now, what's interesting about this is when I was thinking about it, it was like, Hal and people on Earth, Hal had powers in Jeff Thorne's run. Yep. They switched out rings, uh, you know, at the end of Jeff Thorne's run when John made a new, like, source power battery on Oa. And so, um, but when Hal left the core, you know, he's on Earth, and the cool thing is that, uh, you know, so one of the things that started up because the power battery on Earth is charging is this Manhunter armor this dude bought off of ter Mr. Terrific's eBay, you know. Yeah. And, uh, ah, sorry. I don't know what's <laughs> That's going all on. good. But You're so saying... Um... The, so the, the, the power battery started and this guy who had bought this inert piece of 
you know, Manhunter tech, suddenly it starts up and he's like, dude, I've got something awesome. So that guy, you know, modified it so he could be, you know, his own little super evil guy. But when Hal in issue one, so this is months later, probably, uh, you know, when he returns to Earth, he smashes in this guy with a truck. And then because Hal's Hal, he's a he knows what this energy is and he bends it to his will. And we've seen in other versions where Hal's been able to create a ring out of willpower in a way. Right. But he's used that energy, that energy that is basically being powered by this Hal doesn't know, this big uh, uh, battery in the middle of the earth. He bends that energy into a ring. And but this energy doesn't allow him to leave the earth. It's, you know, weirdly peculiar. And the reason he couldn't leave the earth is because it, it was just being like low level charged when he's on earth, you know. And right. so when he gets there and he's like, you know, Tom says that's a shadow of a ring and it and it kind of like melts back into the into the uh, battery. And they give him a proper ring that can be charged and allow him to go out and be Green Lantern in the universe, you know? Yeah, it felt like, um, you know, this last issue, it really, like, kind of explained a lot of it. Because, like, I liked how, you know, as the reader and I, and also how, like, we're trying to figure out, like, why can't he leave Earth, you know? Right. Um, right. And, like, a lot of, the, you know, the people I was talking to about, you know, you know your green lantern that was kind of the question going around and i, and I feel like uh, you know when the issue came out it was like oh finally these you know our questions are answered so it was it was great i really enjoyed questions those. are answered but then like a thousand more questions right right yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah. i mean between this issue and next issue is there's a lot of answered questions but i'll i'll, I'll tell you right now there's going to be a lot more questions <laughs> yeah I really like um, what you've been doing with Sinestro so far yeah. in the run. Like, um, I like the red ring. Uh, the, just, I thought it was a good, I always like when things happen that, you know, whenever I look at like trades on a shelf, I'm like, oh, that's when that happened. And th that felt like that was one of those moments. Like, oh, years down the like, you know, the line, like, oh, remember when Sinestro had the red ring? So it, I like how you kind of gave us another one of those moments with that. Uh, and Sinestro is interesting because he's going to, uh, you know, you know, keep your eye, keep one eye on Sin Sons um, and by Pete Tomasi. And it's like all of this stuff is, you know, having a little bit of Sinestro in my book and then seeing, you know, it's like he takes off, he, you know, the ray, how he was able to manifest red, you know, even though it's his simmering rage inside of him, that, that piece of the question is, that's going to be answered like we've already seen that united planets lanterns at least some of them right now can change their emotional spectrum and um some of that stuff is is you know that's part of the oncoming questions and answers <laughs> yeah i love um the one that the one of the united lanterns um that looks like a, a bird like a hawk yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it was it just funny. so cool I realized that um, I'm trying to think what else I did. So at the beginning of the run, when I did those mercenary monsters, I realized that I need to get better at creating like aliens because I'm always just like, it looks like an eagle, you know, or <laughs> Amon K does such a good job of like making them look alien enough. So it's not just me saying, hey, they're animorphs or whatever, you know? Yeah. Now, I don't know if you can hear me. It's cutting out again. <laughs> um did you have any input yeah. on like the yeah. the look of the outfit because it kind of had like almost a gi look to it i know you're a big martial arts guy like me so i was yeah. just curious was there any input on yeah, that I know. Or? No, I, yeah 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 i um i i liked that um because it just differentiates a little bit from some of them right. and phillips he's got a, a, a slightly different look as well um so you know we're kind of codifying that there might be different you know it's just like in the military um yeah. some people are wearing this some people are wearing that etc so we'll get more into the united planets lantern a little more and then i what i'm excited about i don't know if i'm i'm excited about it for me as an as just me um so i'm very curious if people will like um will like 
some of the new characters that show yeah. up in, the, in the next issue, especially. That's like the the thing I've always loved um, with Green Lantern, like, you know, Jeff um, and Diddy, you know, Morrison, everyone has, it gives you an opportunity to have some new lanterns in there. And there's so many that it's just like, yeah, I always like seeing like, more, I was telling you know? Jeff, I was like so irritated because he filled in every hole. It felt <laughs> like, you know, so yeah. it's like trying to find where the gaps are that I can like, oh, maybe I can explore this or maybe I can. Can explore that and use for my story because because you know thorn what's funny is i i've heard people give him like give some flack to it but like i read it as like a trade almost i read it straight mm. through and i thought it was this really cool kind of high concept sci-fi story it felt like dunish to me a little bit and in terms of uh it with the scope of it and stuff so but but one of the fun things as a writer is like you get to kind of like take the torch and then carry it where you want to carry it mm. and so, um seeing seeing some of those things like the source energy ball and the guardians disappeared and and even the emotional spectrum changing like the united planets emotional spectrum i might be revealing too much but like <laughs> like at the end of jeff thorne's run i think on like the last book before the 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 john stewart's special like it's either bid uh badge badge is that how you say it? i think you say a badge like one mm -hmm. of the lanterns had, like they just got their new rings from the source ball and one of them had changed colors no oh, okay. so it was like i didn't necessarily bring that in i just expounded upon that a little bit you know okay i, I go back and look yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you'll see I, like oh i mean it might be important to, to read some of the last ones so you know what's going on a little bit but yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I I didn't finish um Jeff Thorne's run. It's been on my list of things to kind of finish reading, you know. But plan on revisiting yeah. it at some point. Um, just so you know, a lot of comics out there. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of good comics. It's like oh, there's so much. Comic, there's so many comics out there, dude. You're telling me. I mean, they don't give me free <laughs> comics, so like I'm on DC Infinite, being like, what's happening in the world? I'm I'm writing in <laughs> right. You know. Now I wanted to ask you, like, are there I mean, we talked about this last time, but like, is there anything, any other, you know, DC comics right now that you're kind of like, ooh, I'm enjoying that, or yeah, that's kind of keeping like, your attention. Uh, I I like Birds of Prey. Um, I think uh, it's Kelly that writes that, right? Uh, yeah, I've heard a I, lot of good things about that. I'm a big I'm a big fan of hers, man. When she was doing yeah. Hawkeye over at Marvel. I, I, there's just a, there's kind of a, uh, she has kind of a fun vibe to it. And Bard is really well written. And I, I really dig that. Um, you know, I'll always read something of Tom King and Mitch Jared's. They just, do, they, they always do something. And Tom obviously always does something incredible. Um, I like, and Josh, you know, what's funny is like in the DC universe, Josh doing great, but holy cow, his GI Joes are really good. <laughs> 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 don't tell him i said that i don't want to pump, pump up his ego too much but yeah. I, I really dig uh i really dig josh's i read duke and i was like oh man this is awesome <laughs> like it, it really took me back so yeah. uh, but the dc stuff you know i pretty much consume everything um and just try to try to make sure that i'm i'm within the world you know trying to keep some sort of internal continuity in my head um, absolutely and it's it's hard because it's it, yeah. it's it seems like sometimes it's over the all over the place and i'm not sure which sometimes you know but um i'm trying to yeah. make it work i remember um when when you know josh williamson was on flash it felt like you know every issue it was making reference and little corn you know the editor box to yeah. some other you know it yeah. felt like wow like you know and he, I know he's a continuity junkie, so he's yeah, yeah, like yeah, obsessed yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah, but he's a total nerd. Like, I mean, he's yeah, he's got he's, but he's got. And then I'll check with him sometimes. You know, he he has a lot of answers. You know, he'll tell me what's going on, which is great. You know, in terms yeah. of world stuff. And then Philip is talking to Philip is just like Philip Kennedy Johnson is. You know, he's like a professor. He just like knows too much, you know, it, it's in terms of like, 
to him and I'm like, gosh, this guy's so smart, man. All I want to do is punch people in the nuts or whatever. Like, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel about um, whenever I read like a Jonathan Hickman book, I'm like, oh, he's just so much oh, smarter than me. Dude, you know? I, that, that is, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's totally true. That's me all the time. When I read a Hickman, I like turn the page and I see like this Wikipedia entry and I'm like, oh, I'm stupid you know so yeah. uh, but it's, but it's fun i mean some of them are dense and you can get into and it's fun but i'm having a good time on green lantern and then jay garrick flash and my flash gordon run starts pretty soon which uh, you know will be will be fun yeah. too now, be fun. do you have one more issue with jay garrick one more yeah Six? yeah yeah. yeah so we'll see we'll see it, it's been fun it was like a, it was a nice, uh, it's like the methadone of coming off the, the uh, oh, flight, yeah, you know, a little bit. It was like, oh, I needed that hit. <laughs> you oh, know? Yeah. I, you know, I was so happy, like, you know, because we've talked a couple of times. So, like, when you got that, I was so happy for you. Like, I was like, oh, man, Thank like, because I, I, you know, I feel like, because when I think when we chatted, you just got off flash. And, oh, yeah. So I probably was miserable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, how, how's that experience been you know you said like that it's been nice um well it's been nice it's a six be, issue you know like, yeah six issue i mean that was like i mean jeff basically came to me for jay garrick he's like you have a daughter and you should do this <laughs> you know and then and then he asked him to do alan scott and then you know uh then did he to do sandman and it, it was it was pretty funny sitting in the room with those two and them telling their stories and again me just feeling like i'm such an idiot what am i doing here? <laughs> uh but i i really like jay i mean gosh it would be a dream to be able to do a jsa world war ii series like that would just be mm. hard um and then after star girl lost children that jeff did having all these other characters these kid characters and obviously i'm a complete nut for these kid characters from the flash run i was writing you know I'm like obsessed with like, I love how I, I, there just seems to be a gap. Like there doesn't, there hasn't been a young justice in a little bit. And, mm. you know, there, there's no teen Titans. And I just was like, man, I mean, I've told everybody in the world that I was like, I wanted to get a kid's team going, you know? And then Jeff is like, here's 12 new kids, you know? And I'm like, yeah. oh my God. But what was fun for me too, was kind of rolling them in together because you see in the Jay Garrick series, there's a moment where Quiz Kid and Mr. Terrific's son, Fairplay, are in this lab and they're just catching up with the world and they're super smart. And as I started writing them, I got the same feeling of connectedness as when I was writing One Minute War and Bart and Ace started like I was like, oh, I can, I know what this relationship is. So like when Bart and Ace started like picking at each other and they became like buddies in one minute war i was like oh i dig this relationship and so quiz kid and fair play i was like oh i totally get this, this is really cool having mm. two like super super intelligent kid inventors i think is a real fun dynamic it would work well with some of those other kids um so it's been fun to work with that and then even having like judy garrick uh like trying to figure out who she is you know and that's been that's been fun it's been a fun yeah. book it's like giving a, a totally different dynamic to like, you know, Jay, like, yeah. you know, cause I've, you know, flashes that character. I know the extensive history on it. It was just like, Oh yeah. man, like there's just never been a Jay Garrick story like this before. So it's like, yeah, he I doesn't mean, even know how to deal with it. You know? I know. I know. And it's weird mm -hmm. too, because you're sitting there going like, you know, Jay and Joan, it's like they're, they're you know, it, it would be, it would be so weird to live your life thinking you didn't have a kid and suddenly know you did have a kid. And then on right. top of that, how much time that you missed with that oh, kid, man. which is pretty tragic. But it, it's also hard because you're, you know, it's funny. I think before I started writing Wally, you know, I was in the camp too. It's like, gosh, how many speedsters are there? This is crazy. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And then as I got into it and really started kind of exploring who I thought they were, then it was like, you know, screw you guys. Everyone is valuable. You know, like, yeah. They're all amazing. They all deserve their own solo title. You yeah. Know? You know, so. it's, it, it's that thing that I, I've always had that debate with, um, 
you know, my buddy JD is like, uh, should, he's always said like, should there be another flash title? And I'm like, well, I like just the one series. Like, you know, it's, I always have said like flash is the, the most accessible character to get into, you know, you could start at Mark Wade, go to Jeff Johns, then keep going, you know, it's consecutive, but I'm always like, you know, because there's so many in the family that it's like, oh, give him another title. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, but I, you know, in this case, I'm happy that you had the six issues to kind of tell a story, but there's, you know, there's still just the main title. So I think cut out again. Is um, yeah. what I was going to say. Is that, uh, the fact that it feels like Splash in particular feels like a consistent continuity. Yeah. You know, what I mean? like it's like they've rebooted the universe a bunch of times, but for mm. whatever reason, and that was something I always held as for Wally is that he knows all the continuity shifts and he knows the reboots and he's very aware of it. But it always felt like for whatever reason, the Flash universe was somewhat in, unaffected. Even when it was affected, like Linda's, you know, the kids are disappeared and Linda's not together. They, it, it like, they immediately fixed that. <laughs> yeah. Know? It was just like, oh, that's weird. That's cool though, you know? Right. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't know how much you heard, but I kind of, um, I've always been in kind of in favor of like just one, one flash title, you know, but yeah, yeah, yeah I heard that. Yeah. You know, so well, listen, I like the flash title, but I always thought there should be a anthology series or something, mm. which would be cool. Like if you did a, maybe if you even did a three, like a, like a flash family book that had like three, eight page stories in it or something that you could just continue. Uh, or heck, even if you did a flash book with an eight page backup, uh that you could continue on and do other stories because i would love to be like wally and then see what's going on with barry or the kids or but i but i also recognize like i recognize i don't there's no appetite for that in the marketplace sadly yeah i mean yeah i mean i would eat that up but you know it's like i mean what you really want is you want to be able to do a green lantern uh is doing now but like you you know when jeff johns was running green lantern and then it was tomasi was doing green lantern core you want to be able to have like that one two punch which i thought worked so incredibly well um, yeah the little companion book on the side it was like okay this is like you know everything with hal jordan and this is everybody yeah. else you know and so now they, i guess they have speed force and um with ace and uh avery oh yep and then oh, I thought that was going on. Oops. Listen, and then and then Jay Garrick. So it's like, I you know I can't complain. I, I the only complaint I have is I would love to keep writing Jay. <laughs> yeah, know? I would love to be writing Jay or any of these other characters. But but it's all good. I mean, like with Green Lantern, it, it's it's really interesting for me because I'm fairly new to comics. Yeah, uh, I say, and um, I'm going to keep saying that until I'm well into my 90s. But anyways, um, like it's weird to. With Flash, you could do anything. It felt like it felt like any issue could be crazy. And then with Green Lantern, right now, right now, I, I in my head, I know where I want to be to where I could do crazy things on Green Lantern. But but right now, I feel like this is just a this is a very serialized, ongoing story with adventure and excitement and romance and you know the whole bit yeah no i mean um i know you can't say too much but like what you know we got some stuff going on with carol which i mean um i feel like it's been years since there's been like a lot of back and forth with them so it's good to see you know carol back in the book because i think vin diddy was the last green lantern writer that i mean morrison teaches tease some stuff but it never really went anywhere but yeah venditti was kind of like bringing them back together and when was the last time how was uh the center focus of green lantern like 2018 yeah 19 Which, when you say that it's like that's not that long ago and then you're like oh that was like that was like five years ago you know yeah 
five Wait, or six was years that, ago. Was that Morrison's? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I put Morrison in, in a totally different other bucket. Like, you know, any, anytime it's Grant Morrison, it's like, well, okay. But that, besides Grant Morrison, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the Carol thing is really interesting to me because I think I said this last time, there was very much would they, will they, won't they? Mm. And I didn't know. I didn't know. And, um, and uh, it, it was interesting just to kind of explore that character. And then there were, there were some of the, that was one of those nooks and crannies I felt like in Green Lantern, I, I could, I could fill in a little bit is mm. reality is these people have known each other their entire lives. And um, that is something I'm going to uh, talk about and maybe we'll see some of that, which will be fun. So cool. That'll be well, interesting. Looking forward to it. Looking yeah, forward to it. Be, definitely. Be fun. Um, I, listen, I, all of this, all of this is just pat, like crap. But thank goodness Zermanico's art is so good. And Amon K, who's come on a couple bunch of times, art is yeah. so good. Amazing. Oh, absolutely. Color. It's just been, it's been remarkable. I remember when they said Zermanico and I told my friend Tim, he was so pissed. <laughs> because really? we, yeah, because we both, we both came off Flashpoint Beyond and we're like, how do we get Zermanico to do it? Like, I didn't even choose him, but we were all just like, you know, He's so good. I'm surprised they haven't taken him away from me for a bat book. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not like uh, that, here. That's another thing. I mean, just a flashpoint beyond, like, you know, it was, it was awesome. You know, yeah. just yeah. Aw so cool to go back into that world, you know? It was cool for us. We just got like a master class with, with Mr. Jeffrey Johns. So. Yeah. That was really, really fun. And just to hear his kind of viewpoint and us just kind of all, you know, collabing on it was really, really neat. Yeah, you were telling me um, about, you know, when, when you got to meet him with, with Tim Sheridan, you know, yeah. you met him at a steakhouse. And like, yeah. I was like, oh, this just sounds so cool, you know? And it's just like, yeah. It, I, didn't, I just couldn't imagine. Think. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you, it's like, I've heard people say he's great. And I've heard people say, oh, he's the devil himself, you know, type thing. <laughs> It's funny because then you meet him and you're like, oh, whoever said that he's the devil, I think I my belief is now, because you know how you meet somebody and you're like, they can only pretend for so long, you know? Mm. It's like I've known him for a long Nice, but effusively nice in a way that's like, he wants to know how he can help in any way. I mean, he's really, really kind. And so it makes me think that there might have been another thing at play, you know, mm -hmm. that probably somebody that he's, you know, he doesn't suffer fools. And and I will tell you the thing about him that I that I'm sure rubs people the wrong way is that he wants the best book that you can make. And if it's going to be late, oh, well, because at the end of the day, it's going to be the best book. that he can make man i gotta yeah. i gotta fix my zoom uh but like it's gonna oh, be no the worries. best book it's gonna be the best book that he can make and it's gonna live on a shelf long after people were worried about you know when it showed up at the store and um and that's why he's jeff johns you yeah. know i mean he cares about the story and he cares about it being a great piece of art you know yeah and i don't have the juice for that i can't be like hey let's just postpone it you know, they're yeah. like, no, not going to happen, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I remember when he did Doomsday Clock, that got delayed quite a bit. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny because, like, Jeff Johns, he was just that, it was like, I think his Green Lantern was the first comics I ever really read. Dude. That and, like, Mark Wade's Flash. So, like, you know, it's just like, whenever I'd go into a comic store as a kid, if I saw Jeff Johns, I'm like, that's got to be good. Yeah. You know? Of course. So, yeah, I would just yeah. kind of followed his career. He's just one of us. But the, the other reality is he shouldn't even be doing comic books. He's so busy with other stuff, but like he's he's one of us. It's like he's he loves it. Oh yeah. You know? And that's been fun to meet people that just love it. Like that's been uh, you know, when I started comics it was during COVID, so I didn't get to meet people. Yeah. Um, I, you know, we I wasn't like going in the office or anything like that. 
So last year when I started doing conventions, one of the main purposes was just to meet people. And man, there are some really fun, cool comic book dudes out there and women um, that are just like, just not just super nice, but they're really into it, man. They love this yeah. stuff. It's really cool. Absolutely. I mean, I, I got to meet, I mean, Pete Tomazzi's always come to my local con. Yeah. He was always a guy where like, oh, I got to go just talk to him for a little bit. And dude, what a what a cool dude. Yeah, great guy. I I, I, I was good. I didn't I didn't freak out too much about how much of a fan I was about him. I mm. felt I felt good about how I didn't freak out too much because I was <laughs> I was a big fan. I've been a big fan of a lot of stuff he does. And then I you know I I had done the Super Sons movie too, and mm. um, you know, big fan of Super Sons. And uh, it it's just like, he's very smart. He's a very smart, I would love to be able to meet, I haven't met Fabian, I don't know how to say his last name, if it's Nicieza or-, or Nicieza. Yeah, he got I'm a, it, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, a, I was a big fan of that guy growing up too. Oh yeah. Yeah, like New Warriors. And uh, there was a bunch of books that he did that I just kept going like, oh my gosh. I, and it was funny because as a kid, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even look at the credits. I just, you know, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And so when I went back, it was like Fabian stuff. Uh, a lot of Mark Grunewald stuff was uh, was my jam. And then Frank Miller stuff, obviously. Um, so you got to meet Frank Miller? Yeah, I, I about me and David Pepos, uh, who's doing a Punisher right now. And we, we got to meet him together. And it was like, I could not be a bigger nerd. It was like, oh, you uh, remember when you did that thing? And it was just like, it was just, pathetic. but he was so sweet and he was so nice. And, um, you know, it's just like when you, when somebody's stuff like impacts you like that, it's like, I stopped a lot. There was a few years ago, I'd be like, oh, I'm too cool for school. And I always thought, I just want to, I just want to meet them in a professional sense. Mm. Like I want to be able to, you know, and then at a certain point I was just like, no way, man. Like if, if these guys die or whatever, or, you know, or I die, like I want to be able to sit there and go like, Hey, I want to nerd out, let them know that like, and I'm sure it comes off uh, too earnest sometimes. Like I think, I, I think Kevin McGuire is such a cool dude. And I'm, I'm sure that like, he had to get past the fact that I'm just like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you, know, so. you, you met him? You met Kevin McGuire? I mean, I know you've worked yeah, with yeah. him. So yeah, yeah. I met him at a con after. So he had done the, the thing on The Flash, which still is like memed. It like show up and people, and I'm just like, it's so funny. And the mm. cool thing about not, is one of the cool things about his art is like, I just have to write something mildly amusing and then he'll just freaking, you know, take it to like the, like he, he just makes, he's the reason it's funny. Um, and so I met him at a con. And I said, Hey, I wrote this thing. And he was very nice and very polite. And then I, I, it seemed like we were on the same circuit for a while and I would come by and talk to him and, and, and be kind of like, Hey, how's it going? You know? <laughs> and, um, uh, and now he's doing another backup for us, like uh, a three issue back, three, eight issues for Green Lantern starting Next month, I think. Yeah, Guy Gardner. I saw that. I'm, I'm yeah, super stoked yeah. for that. Yeah. And it was fun to tee it up inside the book where it's like the United Planets are like, we have an assignment for you. And Guy Gardner is like, yeah, screw you, you bureaucrat. You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They're, like, they're like, we need you to find Lobo. He's like, all right, that's great. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like, I was like, I'm sure there's going to be some people mad at me because the way that I think of Guy is always the JLI. He's, he's, he's like one foot in being a jerk and one foot being you know a great hero and i love that um and he's competent but he's also kind of honoring um and he's had so i'm excited i'm excited to be able to play with that a little bit yeah and i i feel like you know you you can't really if you're gonna do anything with guy gardner you gotta have that in the back of your mind you know the right. jli stuff yeah, when I was growing like, up, I always thought Dennis Leary. It was like Dennis Leary was big at one point. I remember thinking, like, that's that's Guy Gardner, you know, like oh, I just cool. a certain amount of like Irish, you know, anger. <laughs> you know? So, so. Yeah, I wonder how uh, Nathan Fillion's gonna do with. Yeah, I don't know. 
Because I always thought he'd be Hal Jordan. I mean, he voiced okay. Hal Jordan. Yeah. You know? So it's like, okay. But. Yeah, I know. It's weird to me. But I don't know. I don't understand. Like, some of that casting is so great. Like, the uh, Miss Maisel as Lois Lane, you know, is like, oh, my gosh, that's perfect. Mm. But I don't. But I'm so curious because it feels like the nerd in me is like, how are they younger than Metamorpho? And, and you know, like, you know, how does that make sense? The guy Gardner's, you know, like I get in my nerd brain. So, we'll yeah, see. I'm sure we'll I, see. I'm excited. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm, I'll, I'll take any Green Lantern on screen, you know, just to see another Green Lantern. Oh, totally. Yeah, totally. You know? I, get, I get that. Yeah. But I know you have to get going soon, so uh, yeah. we can wrap this up. But thanks again for Got coming any, on. Any here, more man. huge questions? Huge pressing questions as we rambled into the evening. Oh, um, well, have you have you you know read any Asperger's Flash? Since uh, you know, he started on there. No, I mean, you know, it was funny when I asked Mark. I think Mark said this. He said it took him a long time to go back and um, read Flash or to read Flash after he was done because it feels like, an, you know, like you broke up with a girlfriend or something, you know? Yeah. Um, so I out of respect for him too. It's like, I would hate to read it and be so incensed or something, you know, or whatever. Yeah. They just be like that jerk comic guy that's just like, screw this guy, you know? But I, yeah. I introduced myself and then we were on a panel at Comic-Con in, in New York. And what a nice guy. What a nice guy, but he was like, and absurdly handsome too. Like at a certain level, a comic book, you can't write or you shouldn't be, you know, this like tall, you know, I'm just like, oh, I look like a hobbit. Like I'm always just looking like a hobbit in front of these guys. But he, what a charming, charming dude. Yeah, no, I, I figured, because um, I feel like a lot of writers say that when they get off a book, they're kind of just like, they distance themselves from it, you know? Um, trying to remember who uh, I talked yeah. to. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you don't know have to. What? It's a common thing. You know, it's a common yeah. thing, I feel like, to, you know, distance yourself from it. I feel like every writer has done that at some point. Well, I'll distance myself, and then, you know, it'll be like a year down the road or something. Something else. I will say, I just not um, want us to be here, but yeah. I'll, I, I, yeah, I'll leave for like a, and then I'll probably go back and like check it out, you know. Yeah, but I will he, say he he's kind of continued a lot of the stuff that you've you did. Oh, cool! Like Mister Terrific's prominent in the book. Um, you know, the kids. It doesn't feel like a jarring. Like, all right, we're now we're going in this direction. It's like it feels organically like okay. Where you ended off he's continued so oh cool cool cool, cool. Dig it? what, what were you gonna say it? do you dig it then i dig it it's i will say it, it feels like it feels like morrison's green lantern where it's like very high concept there's a lot of new things um it's not as um oh, interesting. not as grounded but there's a lot of substance in there. A lot of, a lot of, a lot going on. Actually, I've been reviewing every time a new issue comes out. I review it with my buddy, yeah, and um, on the channel, yeah. And then we always kind of just like, oh, where's this going? And all these questions. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's fun that there's like, you know, it feels like a run where like you're gonna have to read it twice, you know, to get it. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, like totally, when totally. it's all said and done, then it's like, oh, well, let's retreat it again. Oh, he was teasing that there, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh. I wish I could write like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, yeah, we were talking about Hickman. Like, that's like, you're like 30 issues ahead. You already know what's going to happen. But the yeah. what? Oh, no, I was saying, like, it's kind of like Hickman, like, you're 30 issues ahead, you know? Or, you already know what's going to happen. It's like, wow, I or, can't even wrap my head around that. That's but so cool. That's what it seems like Spurrier is doing, which is, like, okay. it's exciting. Um, I'm just, I'm always just curious, like, how far writers are planning things out, you know?
Well, the Zoom is really getting screwed up now. I know we. I know it's like it does not want us to talk anymore. All right, let's wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, I mean, this is awesome. I really appreciate yeah. you, uh, you know, taking the time to talk to me. Um, no problem, Drew. You know, you, I can make you, it away. Yeah. No, definitely. That'd be awesome. Love to actually meet you. You know. But um, you know, enjoying what you're doing, man, and I'm, I'm looking forward to what you're doing. It's great stuff. Thank you so much, man. Now let's get out of here before it makes us get out of here. <laughs>